Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening to all. My name is Enzo Racinato, and I am chair of the Winchester Finance Committee. Tonight, I'll provide the Finance Committee's typical wrap-up of the recently ended fiscal year 2020, along with some of our current challenges coming in 2021. Covering a, a $120 million budget in five minutes is going to be challenging, but I'll do what I can to stay in the moderator's good graces. But going to the first slide, fiscal year 2020 revenues were $126 million, which was 6% higher than 2019. Typical rev typically, revenues grow in the 25 to 3% range, but this year we are higher due to the addition of the 2019 $10 million override. In 2020, the town leveraged $6.7 million of the override funds, while the rest will be added to the tax levy in 2021 and beyond as needed. While actual revenue was slightly lower than expected by $150,000, this was more than made up by higher than expected term backs of $2.7 million. With COVID hitting us in late Feb, many departments limited spending to only essential increases, which really helped us offset other unexpected COVID costs. At a high level, you can see that the vast majority of our revenue comes from property taxes, and most of the expenditures fund the education budget. The override allowed us to add additional services and accelerate some of our capital projects, growing expenses at 5.5% over 2019. As in most years, we use free cash to fund projects approved during fall and springtown meetings. For 2020, those totaled $1.6 million, $500,000 to, to both the Capital Stabilization Fund and Affordable Housing Trust, and $335,000 to balance the 2020 budget in the spring. FinCom can also help pay unexpected costs during the year via the Reserve Fund. In 2020, we had $469,000 come, come across many individual departments, the largest of which were the emergency uh, COVID funding as well as higher unemployment costs due to the shutdown. This next slide shows our operating reserve position, which is an important metric. Reserves protect the town in case of unforeseen challenges and also helps to ensure that we maintain our AAA bond rating to keep our borrowing costs low. Select Board's policy is to maintain operating reserves between 6 and 10% of revenues. We're currently at 11.92%, which is above the range. As you can see, the override bump helped us shift the curve. However, this chart doesn't yet reflect many of the changing assumptions over the last couple of months. We'll be working to get a more accurate view in the next several weeks along with the town manager. I want to highlight too that this curve can shift downwards very quickly, so we'll need to continue to be wary of expense growth in future years to try to extend the number of years before we need another over. Heading into 2021, I want to cover some key focus areas as well as positive de developments that we've had over the summer. We have Lynch planning underway and there'll be some ongoing prep expenses with a large debt exclusion for that project, probably in 2022 or 2023. Morocco then would be next from a strategic perspective, but in the interim, we'll also need to fund some capital projects on the current school. In general, a key challenge we have to overcome is that there are several large expenditures in the budget that consistently grow faster than our 3% revenue target, which puts pressure on all the other budget items. So some quick examples of that would be health insurance costs that continue to rise, and that's $11 million across all town and school employees. Contributory retirement, which is our pension plan, is going to increase by 7 and 3 quarters uh, percent each year, compounding until 2029, based on the current actuarial table. So it's going to go from $6 million this year to $10 million by 2029. And our OPEB um, liability, which is other post-employment benefits, reached $130 million last year and continues to be underfunded. So it's an issue that we need to address more, more on that later. Uh, on a positive note, we've been helped tremendously by several government funding programs this summer for COVID-related expenses, especially with the opening of the schools. Dr. Evans and our town manager, Lisa Wong, and their teams have done a fantastic job leveraging these funds to cover many of these expenses, which are expected to reach over $3 million in total by the end of the year. But I should also note that these positives can turn to negatives very quickly. The government funding runs out December 30th, and if there isn't a second wave of funding from Congress, we'll start to see those expenses hit our budget, as many of the later articles tonight will show. And while state funding was not cut as expected in 2021, there are some early indications that state funding in 2022 will be impacted. So budget flexibility and restraint will be as important as ever. Coming into 2021, FinCom has several key goals, most important of which will be with all the changing assumptions from COVID over the last several months, we need to partner with the town manager and select board, revisit our three-year plan, and better understand what our fiscal strategy is going to be going forward. In addition, 
we're going to be looking to set some specific policy goals with Select Board around key areas, including the OPEV liability I mentioned earlier, legal spending, as well as continuing to move forward with plans for the Waterfield development. Obviously, this was a very quick overview, so please feel free to reach out to me or any other FinCom member for more information. Thank you for your time.